Hi, I am Ravi, Ravi Handa, founder of the website handakafanda.com. As you might know, the SBIPO notification was just released and today we are here to discuss the details that we can find from this SBIPO 2016 notification. So let's start. One of the first and the most important things is as you might know, the dates. The online registration starts from 4th of May, that is today when I am making this particular video till 24th of May. So you have 20 day period in which you can register for it. The prelims exam will be held roughly two months from now. So you have 60 days to prepare. You need to use them wisely. You can have a look at the online course that we have for it on handakafunda.com. Do check out the website. You'll find a lot of other stuff there as well. So the prelims exam will be conducted on four dates, 2nd, 3rd, 9th and 10th of July. The prelim results will be declared very quickly as you can see just in a gap of seven days on the 18th of July and on the 31st of July there will be the mains exam and that's I believe the key differentiator here. The mains exam the results for that will be declared on the 16th of August. Only the people who clear the prelims will be allowed to write the mains I guess that is obvious. The mains after the results are declared on the 16th, the students, the candidates will need to go for a GDPI round which will be held on the 1st of September and the final results will be declared on the 30th of September. So these are the important dates as far as SBIPO 2016 exam is concerned. Now let's have a look at some other important details. This time the number of vacancies is high, it's 2200 and that's a good sign obviously. Not only people who have graduated, but final year students can also apply this time. The salary as mentioned in the notification is anywhere from 7.55 lakhs to 12.93 lakhs depending upon your posting and stuff like that. The age should be between 21 and 30 years. Phase 1, the prelims part of the exam that will be conducted uh, in early July. That will consist of three sections, English language, data interpretation and reasoning. So it's quite similar to last year. This will be a one hour exam. So you will have one hour to go through 100 questions and they will be of 100 marks. There will be 30 mark questions on English. There will be 30 questions. So everything will be a one mark question. Similarly, DI will have 35 questions on 35 marks. Reasoning will also be for 35 marks and that will also have 35 questions. Please keep in mind to get a call for the finals, you not only need to clear the overall cutoff, but the sectional cutoff as well. The sectional cutoff last year, when the prelims pattern was introduced, more or less the same was 5.75 for English and DI. As you can see, 5.75 out of 30 and 35 is not that difficult. For reasoning, it was a little bit higher at 9.25, or actually quite significantly higher than 5.75. But the kicker, the place where most students get stuck, most of them are able to clear the sectional cutoff. It is the overall cutoff that's the problem. Overall cutoff went pretty high last time at around 47.5 marks. So a good estimate would be roughly if you can do 50 questions, that is a good bet. 50 questions correctly or maybe let's say if you are prone to making a few errors, then you should probably go in for a little higher, let's say 55 or 60 is what would be ideal in that period. Then the mains exam, the mains exam will be of an overall 200 marks. It will consist of four sections, reasoning and computer aptitude. So this was not there last year. So they have mixed up reasoning and computer aptitude. There will be 45 questions and there will be 60 marks for it. So I'm assuming what might happen is the computer aptitude questions would be one mark each whereas the reasoning questions would be two marks or something like that. There might be some reasoning questions which are of one mark also. Then another thing is for DI, DI will have 35 questions for 60 marks. This is probably going to be the easiest section for most of the students to clear the cutoff to score well. That is 40 marks for 40 questions in general economic and banking awareness. Now unlike last year, there is no marketing aptitude. So this is becomes an even higher scoring section. These are the sections I believe where uh, you will face a little bit difficulty but this is where you should score. 
on the other hand for english there are going to be 40 questions okay and this should have been 40 marks so this will also be for 40 marks so the total marks as you can see is 200 over here another thing that they have introduced new this time around is the sectional time limits so you'll have 60 minutes for the reasoning section 45 minutes for the di section 35 minutes for the banking sections and 40 minutes for the english section which will make the overall paper as a two hour paper not only that in the mains there is another part which is for 30 minutes and for 50 marks that will consist of letter writing and essay writing this is again something for which you will need a little bit of practice we do cover it extensively in our online course on handakafunda.com moving on the phase three the group discussion and the interview stage group discussion will be for 20 marks and the personal interview stage will be for 30 marks and whatever you score here that will be used in your final selection process please note in the final selection the only thing that matters is what were your score in mains and what was your score in the gd and the interview round so the mains was 250 marks your 250 marks will be converted to be out of 75 whatever percentage you get here that will get converted to your mains total and your 50 marks which are there in the gd and the pi round that will get converted to this part i hope with this particular video, I have been able to give you some insights about the FBI PO 2016 exam. Do not forget to check out our online course as well as our online test series on handagafunda.com for FBI PO exam. Thank you.